Hello, my name is Mark Shinesk. I'm Senior Application Engineer with Siler Design Solutions. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a sub-assembly from a polyline. Now, in this particular uh, drawing I have open, I have a corridor model already, and I have an assembly created. And I want to add this shape I've shown here for a wall to set in my uh, corridor model 50 feet to the right of the center line. I've already have all the pieces in place in my assembly, including a uh, offset to surface elevation uh, uh, general sub-assembly. Um, and I want to create a sub-assembly for this wall detail. So here I have in my drawing, if you look at my properties, it's just a polyline. And I'm going to convert this to a sub-assembly. Now, if you notice in the creation of my polyline, if you look at the grips I have, I have an additional vertex here where I'm going to use as my insertion point. Uh, more will come of that uh, after I make the subassembly from polyline, and I'll show you how to um, change your target to uh, any area that you need. So the first thing I'm going to do here is come to my Home tab. On my Create Design panel, I'm going to expand on that, and right here you see the command for Create Subassembly from Polyline. Once I select that, it's going to select, say, select an entity. I'm going to choose my polyline and create a sub-assembly from polyline dialog box will open. I'm going to call this barrier wall from polyline. Give it a name. I'm going to give it a code set style. I've created a code set style here that will show the code labels for each of the points and links of my sub-assembly. Um, if you have any curved items in here, you can add extra vertices using the middle ordinate distance. Since I don't have a straight wall, uh, straight polyline areas, this will not matter. And I'm going to break my links into multiple links so I can code them separately as I need to. I will erase the existing entity and replace it with the subassembly. Once I have filled out my subassembly dialog box as needed, I will click OK, and it has converted it to a subassembly. Notice there's no shape figure in here, just the links and the points. Everything right now is using the uncoded link name or point name. I'll go ahead and click on that subassembly. And in my dialog box here, or my ribbon, I get a special modify subassembly ribbon that shows up for this created subassembly. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add some code. So I'll add a few codes here. I'll choose add code, and in my command line it says enter a code. I'll say barrier, enter, and I'll select a link to apply that code to. I'll add another code at the top, the same thing, barrier, enter. I'll select my barrier link at the top, and I'll add one more to the right side here, barrier. And you can continue around adding codes to your links as needed. Um, I can also add codes to points. So maybe I'll say top wall, enter, and I'll choose this point. And I'll add one more here. We'll say back wall, and I'll choose this point here. Now, in order for these to show up properly in your cross sections or your corridor, you, of course, are going to have to have a code set style with these names imported in if they are not part of the standard code names that come with the standard Civil 3D subassemblies. Let me add a few more items here. I'm going to go ahead and reselect my new subassembly, and I'm going to go ahead and add a shape. I'm going to select all my links here, hit Enter, and has added a shape in here. Now if I go to and add code here, maybe I'll add... Um, I already have one here. I'm going to use the same code that I use for my concrete curve. So I'm just going to apply the curb code to that shape. And you can see it's changed it uh, standard color. Many of you have seen this if you're using the default template uh, for that curb code shape. I could have made a different name for it. I can remove a code or remove a shape. Here's that modify origin. Now the current origin is at the bottom of my footing here. I wanted that extra vertex in my uh, polyline to be the insertion point for my subassembly. So I'm going to choose the modify origin and I'm going to snap to that code. That now becomes my origin point. Uh, if I look at my subassembly properties for the subassembly, you can see there are no parameters that can be added towards this. 
but I can see what codes have been added, including what names for the link points and shapes as uh, I have added them. If I need to actually do a more in-depth subassembly, I'll need to use the subassembly composer program that comes uh, installed with Civil 3D. Once I reach this point and I have my simple subassembly created, I'm going to say add to assembly and choose that command at the top. And it's going to ask me to choose the marker point to move that subassembly to. I'll move it to the end of my uh, generic, uh, what is that? That is the uh, generic link point on surface at offset. Okay. Now that I've added that subassembly to my assembly, I'll come here in my prospector and you can see that my corridor needs to be updated. I'll right click and rebuild my corridor. And then I will slide over my viewport window and you can see that the corridor model has been updated and it has added that wall subassembly to my corridor model. Um, again, I will also, I have some cross section cut. You can see that it has been added to my cross sections as well. Uh, if you have any questions, you may email me at mshinesk at siler-ds.com. Please don't forget to view and subscribe to our blog at www.siler-ds.com forward slash blog for more tips, tricks, and news about Autodesk and other products uh, relevant to your designs. Thank you, and I hope this video has helped, and have a great day. Bye-bye.